what are sort of the, the main points to discuss, um, you know, in terms of the public and neurologists should be aware of when we're talking about infantile spasms, just sort of just the outline in general? Um, infantile spasms is a very specific type of epilepsy, which is very serious um, and can have significant um, detriment to the child and their development. It typically presents itself before a year of age, um, usually around between six and eight months of age. And um, it's so critically important to recognize it when it begins and to um, seek access of medical care initially with your primary and then quickly be seen by a neurologist. How has our understanding of infantile spasms or the condition evolved slash improved over time? Uh, which areas do you feel as though that we've made the greatest strides in you know the last couple of decades per se? What I would probably say with the advent of cell phones and being able to take videos on your phone, that's had a huge impact on the length of time from the onset of the seizures to the child um, receiving medical attention. And I think with families' ability to go to the internet and research what an infantile spasm looks like has been very advantageous. And I think when I think back 10, 20 years ago, it may be typically a month to three months of a child having this type of seizure before they saw the neurologist. Now it's in less than a week. Um, so that's been a huge advance. And then I think there is a great list of causes of infantile spasms. And one of them is um, genetics. Mm -hmm. And there's many genes um, in genetics that cause epilepsy. And I think the advances in diagnosis of genetic conditions has very much impacted our speed of determining the etiology of spasms and also directing um, the uh, plan of care. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious too, you talked about how sometimes these infantile spasms may take a little bit longer time to sort of either show than originally in some cases are different. So are there complexities with sort of seeing initial symptoms of infantile spasms? Are there sometimes things that may look like something else that people may be confused about or anything of that sort? The classic um, scenario is as many um, families may think that the baby's having colic. Mm -hmm. um, so they can it can be confused for that. So that's why the video is so important. And not all spasms look the same. Mm -hmm. They may be a flexion motion of um, at the trunk with the arms coming close to the body, or it may look like a startle, very much like a moral response. The other thing is, is um, sometimes spasms start very, very subtly with just a pr prolonged eye closure um, and that comes in clusters. Um, and usually they happen around falling off to sleep or awakening from sleep and they evolve over days to weeks. So I think because there's been more interest in studying infantile spasms, we've expanded our awareness of how subtle they can be when they first begin.